To catch fish, you have to have water. There you go. Genius pros tip for the day. That's it. I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs> so in this How to Fish series, we've talked about some basic things, rods and reels and casting, stuff like that. Um, so where do you fish? We fish where the fish are. It's pretty simple, right? <laughs> Maybe not always simple, but you're going to find out hopefully a few things about that coming right up. Hopefully. I'm D.W. Verts, Hickbilly Outdoors. More lessons on learning how to fish. Coming your way. Okay, to be more precise, you have to have water with fish in it. And not all water has fish, but a lot of it does. It helps to have some depth. Most ponds will have some depth. Some creeks are pretty shallow. And a rule of thumb, and this is strictly a rule of thumb. Summertime and wintertime, the fish will be a little bit deeper. Springtime and fall, the fish will be a little shallower. And always recheck your drag. I lose my, oh, boy, gosh. I lose my drag, and that one got away from me, and I got hit again. Anyway, that's a rule of thumb. Right now, it's 80-something degrees. The water's still really warm. It's summertime. It's still August. And I'm letting that lure sink down three or four or five feet before I start my retrieve. Rule of thumb. Same thing with bait. Unless the fish show me different, I start getting bit right up here close to the bank, I'll change. If it was a month from now or so, or March or April, I would probably be thrown closer to the bank and start my retrieve as soon as the lure hits the water, as soon as my bait hits the water, get it up where I want the fish to be. Rule of thumb, it's not always that way. So I shot a video a few days ago, fished a pond. Um, and I did a clip or two for this video. And you don't know how these things are going to come together until you start editing and everything. And then you find out you didn't get it all. But it's interesting. I tried to prove a point. Is I bought an old-fashioned cane pole. A bamboo pole. Put a jig and a cork on it. Simplest thing on the planet. And didn't get bit in, oh, I don't know, 8 or 10 minutes of trying it. Because it didn't fit the situation. It's summertime. I could have caught a fish or two doing that eventually in this pond, catching big old sunfish, but I chose not to. As soon as I picked up a lure and threw a little bit farther off the bank, I started catching fish. That's the key to catching fish, is you got to find them, okay? So, if I, you get anything out of this, I'm going to say over and over and over to be thorough, okay? You've got to be thorough, like my hair drying in the wind. <laughs> anyway, you've got to be thorough. You, gain not, you cannot be closed-minded. And expect to catch fish very often or every time. So let's kind of talk about that for a minute. And I'll try to get through this quick and easy because I know I don't do anything quick and easy. So very simply, you have to have water. <laughs> you have to have fish in the water. After that, it's figuring out where they're at in the water, how deep they are, what they're on, what they're not on, how they're holding the thing. So first off, we have cover. You have grass. Grass is one of the best things in the world. I've catch Every kind of fish I've ever caught, my biggest carp come out of grass on a crappie jig. How's that? Catfish live in grass. Everything lives in grass because that's where the food's at. And actually, if you want to take fishing back to the simplest thing in the world, is you got to fish where the food's at. It's not fishing where the fish are at. It's where they're eating at. Okay? So keep that in mind the rest of your life fishing. I don't care if you're 60 or 6, you need to know where the food's at because they're not going to be very far away from it. That's, I, I could quit right now, you run with that, and that'd be about as much as you need. We have what's called cover. That's grass, lily pads, moss, docks, cover. Things fish can get in and under. Structure, a little more complicated, is stuff that's offshore or points that lead offshore. Points, drop-offs, humps, things like that. Humps are like drop-ups. Anyway. We're going to concern ourselves mostly as beginning fishermen with cover. 
cover may be a simple so grass bed, one grass bed in a pond will hold a multitude of fish sometimes compared to the rest of the pond. If you have no cover, you have to rethink things. It's not hard to do, but we're going to fish cover, we're going to fish structure. I talked in this video that I just did about depth. In the summertime and the wintertime, fish will generally be deeper. I talk about this. Generally. Everything I say here is generalizations because fish are wherever they're at. Be thorough. Do not get throw these curveballs that you can't hit. Always be ready for that next bad pitch or weird pitch because it's going to come your way. Be versatile. Be ready to move. Do not stick things out. I'm going to talk about this in this thing. You do not stand in one spot and expect the fish to come to you. It, it can happen. Not often enough. Another thing I haven't talked about is current. Anytime you can have moving water, current, you have a better chance of finding fish that'll bite because fish in current eat more, bite more than fish that aren't in current. Now, not necessarily in the current, although some fish like trout, they're still going to be behind something, but some fish live in faster water better than other fish. Currents caused by wind, tides, water coming in from rainstorms. Some creeks and rivers have moving water all the time anyway. Generation at dams on major reservoirs pull water through. Current. You learn how fish position in current generally. Downstream of something facing into the current generally. Be thorough. It's weird. Sometimes I've caught fish thrown backwards. Don't know why exactly. Except sometimes the other big proponent that comes in is shade. Most fish will be in or near or right behind something that provides shade. Probably 95% of the presentations I make bass fishing is to the shady side of a target first. In other words, I got the sun right here in my face right now, so the shade is behind me. My first presentation is going to be that shady spot. I have caught fish that were using another fish for shade. Here was a fish. This fish is in the shade of that fish. A lot of times a bigger fish. Yeah, I have. It's not always true. The shade's important. But generally, I'm going to go on the shady side first. But I'm going to be thorough. Remember that thorough? I'm going to fish everything. I'm going to fish all around stuff. Until, here's the next thing. Until the fish tell me what they're doing. When the fish tell me what they're doing... I got it made and they will tell you if you give them a chance if you're thorough versatile not stuck on one or two things move around think it out and I don't care if you're walking a pond dam like I did in this video the other day or if you're walking a creek bank or if you're in a bass boat on a 150,000 acre impoundment being able to move a few feet to a few miles if it's necessary on a pond, you're kind of limited, and that's where it's embarrassing because you're in a pond that's got fish in it. Hopefully, we were fishing with fish, right? We we said you have to have fish. We got that? Okay, making sure. I got I got to be thorough. <laughs> you're in an acre pond and you can't catch fish. That makes you a better fisherman. You're going to learn how to beat them out. You're going to learn how to adapt and change and try new things and make good decisions because they're there. You know they're there. They cannot be very many other places. They're in an acre pond. That made me a better fisherman. When you're in a big reservoir, you may be fishing whole creeks that really don't have very many fish. They may be somewhere totally different part of the lake. That's a little scary. Also a challenge. And look at this as a challenge. Be impatient enough to say, I'm not going to make these fish come to me. I'm going to go to them. So if you're in a pond and you're fishing along on a sunny bank with the wind at your back, you ain't catching them. Go to the other side of the pond that's got some shade and the wind blowing on it. Stuff like that. So, warmer water and cold water, usually a little deeper. Springtime and fall when you're in the uh, cool to warm, not hot water anyway. That makes sense. You can fish shower. One time I stand almost right here though, it was winter time, there was ice around the edge of this pond and it had snowed the night before, and I caught a bass between my feet and six inches of water. There's all kinds of scientific explanations why that is, you don't worry about it. The fact is you just be able to try different things, be versatile, 
let the situations dictate what you do. And it's that, that kind of fishing, it's that way in any kind of fishing you do is what I guess I'm trying to say. As far as other experimentation, things that'll help you, there's a gajillion lures and about a hundred different baits you can try for any different situation. It doesn't hurt to try some different things. Just make sure you give whatever it is that you're using a chance. It's more about where the fish are than what you're throwing. It's 99% location. But say you figured out the fish are like here, they're out there in three to five foot of water, like these fish have been so far. You're catching a few, missing a few, that might be a good time to go to a different bait or a different lure. Adjust your retrieve on a lure. Go a little faster, go a little slower. You can fine tune your way into a better day's fishing. So my point being again is you move around, you find a fish. I didn't get any bites up there 30 yards. Not good bites. I come down here, I have not moved since I, except to wade in a little bit. And I'm catching fish. I still haven't wore the spot out, which you can do that. You can catch enough of them. You need to move a few more feet. Fish get tired of seeing their buddies caught and seeing that lure go by them. And if you like sitting in one spot and not catching fish, wonderful. But if I was catfishing right now with a glob of night crawlers and stink bait, if I hadn't got bit in 15 or 20 minutes, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna try throwing a little bit deeper or a little shallower sometimes. I'm gonna try different things. So many times people say the fish ain't biting. No, you're just not where the fish are at. And that's just, sometimes in a boat that's moving miles, different creeks. On a pond or creek itself, that, that's probably just moving up the bank 30 or 40 feet or moving across the pond. Let the wind tell you some things. A lot of times when wind is blowing at you like this kind of has been, that's a good thing. Lures and baits are not anything important unless you have the fish found. Once you learn to find fish, I don't care, again, a pond, a hole in a freaking yard that's got fish in it, once you got them found, then you can learn how to present different baits, different lures. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. We're going to talk about baits and lures and different fish that's a promise so have i covered all this have i been thorough i hope so this is so stupid i, I shouldn't be doing this i'm not probably not gonna fisherman i've just done this my whole life and i've seen mistakes made and all goes back to that mess i found last year i'm a short right now that mess of a pile of lures and hooks and line it was a big snarl mess that made no sense because there was things tied to things that didn't make it was a steel leader we have no need in missouri for steel leaders i guess if i was fishing up north i don't care we've got musky in missouri and i've caught plenty of musky i've never had one cut me off not that i won't steel leader tied to a a treble hook that was a catfish hook strange so that's why this whole video thing started, because I see people crank the reels upside down. I see these snarling messes. I watch people on a bank throwing things that make no sense on tackle that doesn't match. Doesn't work. I think I've covered most of that pretty good. I hope. So I'm going to try to get this video out here tonight, and we'll see how this goes. Thank you all for watching. I'm Dale Verts. It's all about you guys catching fish and taking your kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, nephews, nieces, whatever, fishing. Heck, maybe you're taking your aunt or uncle fishing for the first time. That'd be cool. God bless y'all. We'll talk at you later.